Okay, hi, here is your, um, sorry, your reading lesson, your intermediate lesson for today. All right, we are going to be reading the, uh, what is this called? A crow, a crow, a lion, and a mouse. Oh my. So this is a drama. Dramas are plays that are read and performed. As you read a crow, a, crow, a lion, and a mouse, oh my, we're going to look for the setting or where and when the story takes place. A narrator who reads words the characters do not say. And a list of characters. So remember, uh, we watch Between the Lions in the morning. Who is the narrator of the stories that are read? Dustin? The mom. The mom, very good. The mom lion, the lioness. She is the narrator. A narrator reads the words the characters do not say. Okay? So if the characters are saying the words... That narrator is not reading them. So a list of characters is what we're looking for too. As we read, we're going to create mental images. Mental images is a picture in our brain. Or make pictures in your mind to help you understand details in the story. Before we start reading the story, let's go over some of our vocabulary words. You don't have to write these down. Let's just listen. We have a picture of plane. Now this is not like saying plane or plain yogurt, like it's normal yogurt, it's not strawberry yogurt, it's plain yogurt. It's not the same as that. This is plain, excuse me, okay, sorry, this plain is a flat piece of land with a few trees. So if you can, if you say, I used to play in the plain with my sister, then you used to play on a flat piece of land with a few trees. It's called the plain. Here we have bind. These books are binded together bind. When you bind something, it means tying it up. Okay? Bind. We also have narrow. Narrow. Between the cars and the building, the motorcycles are driving in a narrow um, space. Something that is narrow is thin and has little space. Thin and little space means narrow. The road was too narrow for the cars to pass by one another. There was no room for the cars to pass by one another. It's too narrow. We also have the word clever. Clever. This little girl is clever. She is putting the puzzle pieces together correctly. Clever is very smart. Very good. You, um, when I say, oh, wow, that was very clever, that means it was very smart. Journey. Looks like they're going on a journey. Looks like they're going hiking on a journey. What does journey mean? A journey is a trip from one place to another. So this is their journey, I guess, uh, through their hike. All right, fulfill. fulfill. When you read it, it sounds like fulfill. Fulfill? It's not fulfill, it's fulfill. So what does that mean? When you fulfill something, you make it happen. I fulfill my dreams. That means I made my dreams happen. This kid over here, he went to call it, I'm sorry, this kid, the trip to the beach will fulfill my dream to swim in the ocean. His dream was to swim in the ocean. We still have two more. We have believe, believe. Oh, look, there's a huge person and a small person. When you believe something, you think it's true. So do you believe in giants? Yeah. Do you think they're true? No. Okay. Speech. This kid is giving a speech. When we are in class sometimes, I let you present or give a speech to the class. A speech is a talk you give to an audience. So I enjoyed giving a speech in class. That's the last word we are going to do today. Oh, it's a cute baby. All right, gently. That's for next week. Okay. Let's meet Crystal Hubbard. She is the author of the story. As a child, Crystal Hubbard read everything she could get her hands on. Her love of reading made her want to write books, too. Aesop's fables were among the stories she loved most. She liked the animal characters that taught clever lessons. She thought fables could make a person wise. Miss Hubbard was happy to turn the stories she enjoyed as a child into dramas. As you read, 
think about the lessons you can learn from these characters. A crow, a lion, and a mouse. Oh my! Two fables retold by Crystal Hubbard. So make sure you have your books open. We're on page 152. Okay, so it says the lion and the mouse. We have a cast. A cast means like a list of people that are going to be in the story or the play. So we have the narrator. That's the person that's reading the parts where the characters are not talking. We have the characters, which is lion, mouse, hunter one, and hunter two. Those are the characters. All right. All right, so let's talk about the setting. What is the setting here? Just by looking at the picture, I know we haven't read anything yet, but what's the setting here? Who can raise their hand? Dominic? In the jungle. Very good. Um, and why is the setting important? Because it helps us what? Learn. It helps us kind of build a picture in our head on how that place looked, right? Um, all right, let's go ahead and start reading. Oops. The Lion and the Mouse Cast Narrator Lion Mouse Hunter 1 Hunter 2 Narrator On a sunny plain in Kenya, Lion sleeps. Lion Snore Mouse enters noisily talking on cell phone. Have you tasted the new cheeses at the Nairobi Food Mart? They're so good, and they're on sale. Lion wakes, grabs mouse. I don't like cheeses. I prefer to snack on mices. I mean, mice. Mouse, looking fearful. Please, don't eat me. I'm not even a mouthful. I'm more useful outside your belly than inside. Lion. Yawns. I'm more sleepy than hungry anyway. Run along, little mouse. And then he falls asleep. Okay, real fast. Now we have a better idea. What is the setting of the story? It says it word for word. Dustin? No, what is the setting? That means where does the story take place? Oh, Bernaya. Good. On a sunny plain in Kenya. Very good. It says right here on a sunny plain in Kenya. All right, let's keep reading. Oh, and one more thing. You look here how it has parentheses and then it has stuff in it. Is that what the character is saying or what the character is doing? That's what the character is doing. See here, it says mouse enters noisily talking on cell phone. That's what he's doing. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, have you tasted the new cheeses at the Nairobi food market? They're so good and they're on sale. That's what he's saying. But what is he doing? What is Lion doing? He wakes up and grabs mouse. Is he saying wakes up and grabs mouse? No, no that's what he's doing. So the things in parentheses next to the name of the character is what they're doing. Okay, let's keep going. Falls asleep, narrator. Sleeping lion cannot hear danger approach. Hunter one, carrying a rope, whispers, This lion will be our greatest prize. Hunter two, helps hunter one bind surprise lion. Let's get the truck. Narrator. Mighty Lion has a mighty big problem. Mouse. Nibbling cheese. Drops cheese when he sees Lion. Dude, what happened? Lion. Looking ashamed. Hunters trapped me. I'm so embarrassed. Mouse. Not for long. Narrator. Mouse's tiny sharp teeth chewed and gnawed and tugged at the rope until it fell away. Lion, I'm free! Hugs Mouse. I learned a lesson today. You're a better friend than a meal. Smiling, Lion and Mouse exit together. 
uh, how do the how do you picture lion and mouse exiting together? Do you think they're walking and they're stomping out? No, they're walking. Are, how do you imagine they're walking together? When you are now friends with someone and you, uh, how would you guys walk together? Maybe skipping, maybe holding hands, maybe walking near each other, maybe smiling, right? Okay. Um, let's see. I read that after the hunter traps lion by trying by tying him up with a rope, Mouse's tiny sharp teeth chewed and gnawed and tugged at the rope. These words help me picture Mouse trying really hard to free Lion. So I ask myself, I wonder if Lion will feel differently about Mouse if Mouse frees him. Did he feel differently about him? No. Yes, he started to become his friend now. Before, was he his friend? No, he was going to eat him before. All right, let's keep going. The Crow and the Pitcher. The Crow and the Pitcher. Cast. Crow 1. Crow 2. Narrator. Narrator. On the hottest day of summer, two crows find a pitcher of water. Crow 1. Circling pitcher. It's half full. Crow 2. Wings crossed over chest. It's half empty. Crow 1. Tries to stick beak in pitcher. The opening is too narrow. Crow 2 tries to lift pitcher. I can't hold it because I don't have thumbs, narrator. The crows grow thirstier in the heat of... Hold on, sorry, I'm going to stop right there real fast. Um, what details help you imagine the weather? What does it say? Is it a cold weather? No. What does it say? Uh, it says it's the hottest day of summer so it is hot how do the details help you imagine how the crows feel when you are hot you feel what no hot what are they trying to do they're trying to get water so when it's hot you are thirsty thank you for using your brain when you are hot your mouth is dry and you feel Thirsty. thirsty that helps us better understand why they are trying to get to the water in the picture all right let's keep reading the sizzling sun crow one staring at picture there has to be a way to get that water crow two kicking pebble on ground i wish i had ice cream Kicks a pebble. Or an ice pop. Kicks a pebble. Crow one. I've got it. Picks up a pebble. Crow two. What are you doing with that? Crow one. Drops pebble into pitcher. You'll see. Crow 2, are you making pebble aid? Crow 1, picks up pebble, drops it in pitcher. Just keep watching and you'll see how smart I am. Narrator, this clever crow can't get to the water, so he's making the water get to him. Crow 2, impressed. Wow, the water is rising. Crow 1 spits out pebble. It would rise faster if both of us put in pebbles. Picks up pebble. Crow 2. No, that's okay. You're doing great. Crow 1 drops pebble in pitcher. There, I can finally get a drink. Begins sipping water. Crow 2. Behind Crow 1. Hurry! I want to turn. Save some for me. Silly Crow 2. Okay. Um, when Mouse sees what happens to Lion, he is so su surprised he drops his cheese. What does Mouse see? We can either talk about it or I can make you write it. What do you want to do? Talk about it! Okay, so let me re-ask that question. 
When, when Mouse sees what happens to Lion, he's so surprised he drops his cheese. What does Mouse see? Rena? Okay. What about the lion? What does he see? Dominic? Very good. That the lion is stuck in the hunter's trap. Very good. And that two hunters have him down. They have him down. They have him trapped. How is the narrator part different from the other parts in each story or each drama? Why is the narrator's part different? Is the narrator doing anything? Is the narrator acting? No. The narrator is only reading, reading or saying, right, what's happening. Number three, why is a fable a good way to teach a lesson? What is a lesson you learn from these two fables? What's a lesson we learn from the lion? Um, Dustin. No. What's the lesson? What's the lesson to be learned, JC? What lesson did you learn? Renaya? Good, to not judge anybody about uh, how big or small they are. At first he thought, man, you're useless. I'm going to eat you. And then the mouse convinced him not to eat him. And thank goodness he listened to the mouse and did not eat him. Because if he had eaten him, no one would have saved the lion and the hunters would have eaten the lion. Right? Okay, good. Question two. What lesson do you learn from the fable, the crow? and the picture. What lesson did you learn there, Rena? The picture. Okay. No, not really. But, uh, Jasmine? They need water, but what's the lesson we learned? Pro 2 was about to do what? Leia? Okay, they have to think and they have to also what, Dustin? Okay, but what they have to do, they had to do what, Brenaya? Okay, they had to be smart and they had to not give up. They had to not give up. He was about, Pro 2 was about ready to give up. Pro 1 was like, hold on, look what's happening. The water is getting higher. So the lesson in the second story was to not give up. The lesson in the first story is to be kind, right? Okay, very good. All right, so we have wrapped these up. That's all you guys are doing today. We are just going to talk about it for our reading lesson. All right, I'll see you guys later.